Hey everybody, Sean Tierney here from theautomationschool.com and in this episode of The Automation Show, we're going to connect up an encoder to an S7-1500 PLC and we're going to use a high-speed counter technology object. Now, before we get into that, I just want to say this is the last episode of The Automation Show, Season 1. So it's December 2020 and, um, you know, we got over 50 episodes, so... In January, I hope to restart uh, the Automation Show with Season 2. We also have Automation Tech Tips coming. We'll have more episodes of the Automation Podcast and more. So uh, with that said, let's go ahead and first take a look at the encoder and the PLC itself here. And uh, you can see here's the S7-1500. And I want to show you the encoder. So here's the encoder. And you can see as I turn it, you'll see two lights blink on and off, right? See, that's three and four right there. And um, you can see we're wired in here. We got the encoder wired into uh, plus and minus 24 volts DC. And then we have the A and B going to the white and red. And the white and red, if you look in here, see those, those go into, okay, three and four. Okay, you can see that right there where they turn on and off. All right. So that is the hardware side of everything. Now let's go over to the computer and take a look at actually creating a new project in TIA portal and uh, setting it up to read in this count. So we'll come over to the computer here and what I'll do is I'll go ahead and create a new project here. We're going to call this, let's see here, we'll call it TAS S7-1500 HS, oops, HSC ENC for high speed counter from an encoder. How's that? Okay, so let's go ahead and create that. Okay, now we're going to have to add a device here. And of course, we've seen all kinds of different ways of doing this. This is just one way to do it. Um, you can actually have it go out and identify your con uh, controller out there on the network. But I'm just going to select the model I have here. I'm at still at 2.6, so I'll select that and click on OK. Just give it a second to create the project here. And the first thing I want to do, and I often forget to do this, is I want to change my IP address to match the actual unit I have here. Okay, I sometimes forget that and end up sending it the wrong IP address. The next thing I want to do is I want to change the update rate on those uh, inputs and outputs, you know, three and four, so that it's, uh, you know, to get rid of the filter. I just want them to come in as fast as possible because the encoder is pretty fast. I don't want any type of the anti bounce filter in there. So let's see here. We're looking for three and four. So let's see. That would be zero, one, two, three. We'll make this a manual setting and no input delay. And this would be four. Manual, no input delay. That way we get the information as fast as possible. Now, let's go ahead and click on the uh, controller again here. And let's look at the high speed counters now. I'm going to use HSC5. You can see I uh, already had that open in a previous project uh, to 5, so it just defaults to uh, that. And you can see here, first thing I had to do is I got to activate it, right? It needs to be activated. So let's uh, activate it or else we can't do anything with it. I'm not going to change the name, but I do want to come over here um, and show you some other things here, like channel 0. It says by default it's operating with a technology object that's for counting and measurement. That's what we're going to do. So we'll leave that there. And um, if we come down here to the hardware input outputs, you can see here 11.3, 11.4, or 11 and 12, right? So three and four, those were the actual uh, points on the I.O. card. And, uh, you know, if you count all 16 together, they're 11 and 12. So that matches up nicely with what we saw in the, uh, in the field. And we can go ahead... And let's document these here. So three would have been my, let's see, HSC five, whoops, five, A, that's my A for my encoder. And this one is HSC underscore A, six underscore B. Okay. All right. So three and four, A and B. Oh, look at that typo. All right. There we go. Okay, so we get those documented. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to OB1. So let's go into our program blocks here. 
We'll open up the main program or OB1. And I'm just going to drop a uh, instruction in here. And this block is a high speed counter. There we go. Okay, now it's saying, hey, I need a um, data block for that. So what do you want me to do? I'm actually going to call, create a new data block called DB HSC5. You can call it whatever you want. And uh, I'm going to actually, I'm going to use uh, one for my own global data, data block. So I'm just going to make this five. Okay. So that's the data block here. Now, I have this high speed counter data block in here. You can see on the technology objects, it also created the technology object there. And what I'm going to do is set this up. So I'm going to click here in the little toolbox and it says, well, what am I going to point to? What's the module? Well, we're going to use this one here. So I'll click on the checkbox. It says this will overwrite those parameters. Yes, we do. We want to use this as the, as the guy who's in charge here. This is the one that's setting up the, uh, that's taking control over that high speed counter, this technology object. So here, I don't want to do pulse and direction though, because I have an encoder. So I want to do an encoder A and B. I know how, I'm not using the N, just A and B phase shifted, right? Just like we've done in all our previous videos. Okay, so we got that done. And uh, you can come in here and play with some of these other things. I'm not going to change anything. You know, um, this is pretty much what I wanted to do. So let's, uh, we're okay with that. So let's go back to OB1. And one of the things that uh, I found that I need to do is I need to enable it with the software gate. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and create, let's go ahead and create our own block here to do that. We'll create a data block. This will be my global data block. Again, you're free to organize your control system, your program, however you want. But I like to make uh, my DB1 my global data block. Okay. And there we go. And I'm just going to put in here a, uh, I'm just going to call it HSC5EN. Whoops. There I go again. Perfect. So let's go back to OB1. Come in here. We'll browse for, there it is right there. Okay, so at this point, I can go ahead and uh, compile everything, make sure it's good, and then I can go ahead and download it to the controller here. Let's go ahead and start a search. Remember I said it was 1.115. That's what I've been using uh, for this particular controller, and the 1200 we've been doing was the uh, 1.112. So let's go ahead and load the control uh, program in. It's thinking about it, it says, up. Oh, yep. There's already something in there, so uh, we're going to overwrite that, stop all, load it in. And now it's going to start the module back up, and we should be good to go. All right, now this is the, uh, the moment of truth. Did I do everything right? <laughs> we'll find out in a minute. Let's go ahead and monitor the code here. All right, here we go. We can go ahead and we can modify this to a one to turn it on. Okay. And now let's see what happens when I, let me grab the encoder here, set turning the encoder and look, we're counting up. And you can see this measured value to here, right? We didn't look at that, but that's telling you the frequency. So if I go really fast, that number goes really fast, really big. Okay, and my count's way up there now, for 11,000. Now, if I spin it the other way, well, you can see it come down. So, really, that's how easy it is to use the high-speed counter in an SM1500 Compact, right, using that technology object. There really wasn't much to it. There was a few different steps here. We had to enable the high-speed counter. We had to make sure we had the right... Um, I.O. points that we were using. They had to match the high-speed counter. Um, when we did the technology object, one of the things we wanted to do is change it because by default it was pulse and direction. And we wanted to change it to encoder because we're using an encoder, right? So we had to do that. And uh, I did also change the uh, speed, um, the delay on the inputs. And we did this in the previous videos as well where we didn't want to have any type of filter in there, you know, like a debounce filter. So we uh, change them so there's no delay. So we'll get the fastest speed possible. And with that, you know, we created our data blocks. 
um, one for the technology object, one just for our own global tags, and uh, we're good to go. So with that, that's the end of this episode of The Automation Show. I hope you enjoyed the 50 plus episodes we did over the last year and a half, almost two years. And I know I have had a lot of fun filming them. I hope you'll come back for uh, the next season that we set up next year. Of course, we'll have the Automation Minute continue to go. The Automation Podcast will continue to go. We even have a new show coming out called Automation Tech Tips. And, um, you know, if you want to grab the whole series and support the show, you can do so over on Vimeo. I'll put the link at the bottom of the screen there. You can pick up the entire series, uh, you know, season one of the Automation Show for uh, a real low price. It's like lifetime access, download, streaming, and all that. But with that, again, I want to thank you all. I want to wish you all a very happy holiday. It's December, and uh, the holidays are upon us. So I hope you all have a great holiday. I hope all you hope you all have a uh, awesome New Year. Can't wait for 2021. <laughs> and um, just wish you all good health and happiness and safety. Stay safe too. And with that, I'm going to sign off here for the Automation Show Season One. As always, my friends. Until next time. Peace.